Hello and welcome to Engineering Deathmatch here at Cisco Live. We are at the Social Media Central and we've got a nice crowd here. Give me a holler crowd. All right. So today we have a match sponsored by Turing. It's going to be very exciting. We've got a couple of guys ready to compete. Up first, I'm going to call up Brad Clark. Brad, come on up. So Brad, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a technical lead for our contact center enterprise practice. I've been in the industry probably 15 plus years. So I'm super excited to get going on this. I'm from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. So enjoying the hot weather here. So any strategies today, uh, any, any approach that you want to take with, with, uh, with going to the lab, anything like that? Yeah, I think I'm going to try to knock out the easy stuff right away and then uh, terrorize Josh a little bit and make him think I'm done already. So just get the points for the easy stuff and then make Josh's life miserable. I like it. So up next, let's meet the person you're going to terrorize, Josh Kittle. Come on up, Josh. Oh, and he's got the cape. He's doing the Elvis thing here in Vegas. Josh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a senior collaboration engineer as well, uh, working on voice video data all day long. And uh, I've brought some peanut butter and banana sandwiches that are going to give me the, uh, the edge up on Brad here. So he better watch out. So if you say peanut butter and banana, you gotta kind of got to do the uh, Elvis thing. There's a hunk of hunk of burning collaboration going to happen here. Give me a peanut butter sandwich. All right, guys. So let's get to our scenario. The National Gasket and O-Ring Museum in Bucksnort, Tennessee, has, has had such an increase in attendance that they have decided to require visitors to reserve time to visit the museum. They have created two call center teams, one focused on scheduling appointments of visitors to the museum, and one that is dedicated to answering calls from philanthropist gasket owners that would like to donate pieces to the museum. The museum staff needs to implement two ring gadgets for Cisco Finesse and two rings dashboards and wallboards in order to increase the effectiveness of each of the teams and allow a greater level of collaboration and accountability. They've hired you to configure their two ring environment so they can bring the magic of gaskets to the rest of the world. This episode is sponsored by two ring. In addition to the products featured in this episode, two ring also has a very popular dashboards and wallboards application. Turing has software available across all Cisco Contact Center platforms. For more information and free trials, visit Turing.com. All right, audience, are you ready? Yeah. Come on, audience, are you ready? Yeah. Contestants, are you ready? Yeah. On your mark, get set, go! I think this is going to be a challenge. Uh, we've got some dashboards and wallboards, uh, which is probably going to be the hardest part. Uh, the finesse gadgets, uh, CCX based platform. So for me, that's going to be a little bit out of my element, but uh, I think I can remember what I used to do there. John and Bill in the booth. And would you look at that, Bill? Something we don't often see on Engineering Deathmatch notes and preparation. And would you look at that multitasking chops on Brad? Two ring gadgets for finesse and shopping on Craigslist for a sweet ride. You know, I was going to ask if preparation was even allowed, but to be honest, I just want some more information on that Jeep. Definitely allowed, definitely allowed. Just not often seen. I'm still trying to figure out this whole we allow people to prepare thing. While I get my head wrapped around it, why don't you tell our viewers about Turing? Sure, and then maybe we can come back to the Jeep? Of course, we're not heathens. Okay, well, Turing has been around quite a while now, since 2001 as I recall. They offer some pretty slick solutions for the Cisco Contact Center portfolio. I first came across Turing when I was looking for a solution to display critical data in dashboards and wallboards. But I really like their Turing gadgets, which can be used to put the bling in finesse agent and supervisor interfaces. But enough about your love affair with Turing. Let's see what Josh is doing now. Well, it looks like we're going to be using the Turing's dashboards and wallboards as well as the Turing's gadget application for finesse. Um, these are both solutions that I have seen deployed previously in customer environments. I think they're up to the task that's been presented, and I can't wait to see what this implementation looks like. Say... Looks good. Right, let's see. <laughs> I love this guy. Good old Josh is giving us the play-by-play. -play. He keeps us up and we'll be out of a job. You might be on to something. 
Josh, you're in charge All right, now. Alright, I'm gonna render. I'm fine with that for now. Respect. Respect. Okay, cool. So we've got our tabs. Uh, let's set an info panel. Gadget as a first instant gadget and add a call history view profile to the team gadget. So we're gonna have to actually get the gadgets working here. We're not able to just point the dead stuff, which is all I've done so far. And what I don't know is if I'm gonna have to go into the configuration editor first. Perhaps I should have even done that ahead of this. So setting up finesse layouts is 216. That's all web stuff. Josh? Buddy, you're not gonna comment on this? Okay, I guess I'll have to get back to work. We've given the contestants a ton of things that they can do to win, each with a point value. Contestants will have to choose from tasks that involve configuring two ring teams gadgets, uh, the info panel, as well as configuring two ring orchestrator workflows for incoming calls. And finally, there are definitely some points worth looking at uh, f with configuring two ring dashboards and wall boards. You know, there's something in that explanation I just realized. I was afraid this might happen. I'm kind of excited. No. It's a points match! You might be disappointed. I'm so going to deduct some points. He blinked. Points deduction. You can't deduct points, especially not for blinking. You co-hosts always say that. I'm pretty sure your contract says you can't deduct points. But, wait, what if there's a tie? Oh, um, well, it says, oh man, it says you get to decide how to break the tie. Yes, and I choose hand-to-hand -hand combat. A tie. You know, I, I really like the way you think, but it's kind of unfair for B-Red. How so? Well, we are in Vegas. Yeah? Josh clearly has some home field advantage. We are in Vegas, he has the Elvis cape, and you know he could channel the king with that thing. Oh, dear lord. Viva Las Vegas, baby. <laughs> okay, you may have a point, but before we draw first blood, why don't we see what they think of one another? What do I think of Brad? Well... I've got the cape, so I know I've got an advantage on, the, on him already. Josh, well, the Elvis, the flying Elvis here. Brad has experience with UCCE, I have experience with UCCX, so I think there's probably a fair amount of shared experience there. Um, so I, I think it'll be a good competition, we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, I think he's going to be a tough competitor. I wanted to try uh, and not like him, but so far talking to him, he's a nice guy, so that's going to be hard to do. But I think as uh, the scenario develops here, we'll. We'll probably develop a little animosity and throw some uh, jabs at each other, and hopefully uh, I'll come out on top. They seem a bit too friendly. Maybe it's time to accelerate the timeline. Yes, indeed. 20 minutes remaining, guys. Another thing I can do here is there's some customization of dashboards and wallboards. I might even jump ahead and get out of order a little bit just to nail the points. So, Skipping ahead to get more points. Sounds like Josh is thinking strategically. It sure does, but his approach only works if he can get the points. And he only gets the points if he completes the task. Yep, and he can only do the task if he can just log in. And he only... Oh, I guess that's it. Did I close that? No. No, it's just buried. Ah, oh, he's telling me I've got a different set of credentials. I'm not paying attention to the instructions. Fair enough. I'll take it for that.
It looks like Brad, known to his friends as B-Rad, has gotten the call history gadget working. I think that gives him a pretty healthy lead. It sure does, but looks like with the clock ticking down, Josh is about to put some Not points on the board too. Seems to play. That seems to work. Not the prettiest layout in the world. We could do a lot more with that to make it useful. But it does load. I believe that meets the requirements. Sloppy, but there. Alright, let's see what else we've got going on. And that's time. Fingers off the keys and palms on your knees, boys. It's a wrap. Alright, audience, are you ready to hear who won our touring challenge here at Cisco Live? Yeah! Who do you think it's going to be? Yeah! It was close. The, the point spread was four points. There was a four point difference between the winner and the loser. The winner is Josh. Wow. Congratulations, Josh. Go Presidio. <laughs> I've got to tell you that I thought he had me up until the final results were announced. I didn't stick to my strategy, and I got hung up on a couple hard things and some uh, lab issues, and I didn't go and knock out the easy stuff, so in the end, I lost by a few points. I stepped back, took a thousandth of view of things, and said, hey, here's some points, items at the bottom that I know how to do or know mostly how to do. Let's jump in those, scoop up the points. This was a lot of fun. Definitely, yeah, you guys should come try this uh, and do some engineering deathmatch.